So here's the story. I finished my rewatch of Amagi Billion Park. Really enjoyed it. I decided to check out the show's My Anime List page to see what others thought about it. However, my attention was pulled to the first sentence of the show's synopsis. Kanye Seya, a smart and extremely narcissistic high school student. I scoffed to myself. Who wrote this? How can anyone mistake Kanye as a narcissist? Were we even watching the same anime? I scroll down in contempt, eager to read some well-constructed opinions of the show. However, unbeknownst to me at the time, I was about to learn that I was the odd man out. Review after review, that same word kept popping up again and again. After the click of a tongue, I presumed that these reviewers were simply basing their description of the character off of the synopsis that my enemy list provided. But then another thought came to mind. What was the synopsis basing its description off of? If the answer was what I thought it was, then I was in for loads of disappointment. I skipped around Amagi's first episode and witnessed a scene that slipped my memory, probably because I had banished it to the depths of my subconscious. Alright, it's time to purge the falsehood spread about Kanye by applying the professionally approved symptoms of narcissism to his behaviors throughout the show, and in doing so, prove that he is not a narcissist. Minor spoilers, let's go! The most well-known trait of narcissism is the excessive need for admiration. An early scene depicts Kanye admiring his own reflection and rattling off great things about himself under his breath. While this behavior may feel like it fits the description, it's worth noting that narcissists crave admiration from others, not themselves. Observe how Kanye makes absolutely no effort to garner any attention from anyone around him. He isn't glancing over at people, and he isn't taking up much space. He's completely satisfied with the admiration he has for himself, and has no excessive need for anyone else's. One may be skeptical for his choice to do this in public, however, that skepticism is quickly abolished as we can see him exhibit these behaviors privately too. Alright, well what about the times where Kanye acts like he's better than everyone else and goes on an insulting spree, proclaiming things like, ONLY FOOLS WOULD SPEND ANY MONEY ON YOU LOT. Whenever he acts this way, it's just that, an act. Said by the man himself, he put on this act to see if the people he's about to lead are serious about their jobs, so he's not doing it out of superiority, but out of necessity. He'll also use this act as means for provoking people to overcome their obstacles. <laughs> this act isn't just saved for good-natured provocation, however. He also does it to cheer people up. <laughs> in one scene, his secretary gets down on herself, and he responds with a couple light-hearted jabs. Funny enough, she directly asks him if he's trying to cheer her up, to which he cheekily responds, Who? Me? He knows what he's doing. There's an interesting exchange here where the same character asks Kanye if he can do something about his superiority complex. He replies with, But I am superior. That's a fact. Many would be quick to jump on this statement and call it arrogance, conceit, narcissism, but let's analyze this fairly. This is a rundown park that needs to attract a bunch of visitors within a short time span or else it's done for. All management consultants hired have quit. Yet, here comes Kanye, a 16-year-old without any management experience, doing a great job thus far. So when he says in a calm and straightforward tone, but I am superior, that's a fact. I can't find it in myself to claim that he's exaggerating his importance or abilities. I'd say that his statement isn't full of arrogance, but resilient confidence, which isn't making people's lives worse, but better. A key aspect of narcissism is having an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. Kanye, however, does comfort people, as we've seen him do so countless times using his cocky character act. 
but there are plenty more examples to pick from, starting from the beginning of the story. After he experiences all of what the park has to offer, he rants about how awful it is, and passionately at that, shouting about how one needs conviction and determination in order to properly trick children. Not only is this a wonderful quote to live by, it really captures the essence of Kanye's character. He hates the idea of people not trying hard enough, and by effect, not achieving their dreams. So being brought to a place that's full of broken dreams was his worst nightmare. Note that his entire rant is centered around the park not doing a good job at satisfying children. This part's crucial because it shows us that he inherently cares about others, even people he's never met before. This level of compassion just isn't found in a narcissist. Before we go any further, I need to dispel an action he takes early on in the show, which may cast him in a bad light. Keep in mind, again, he's only 16 and he's being asked to save an amusement park in the edge of collapse. He was forced to go there at gunpoint, got shot by said gun multiple times, and got beaten up by the same employee multiple times. Yeah, his words pack a punch but it's worth it to know that he was hurt quite a bit by the same people requesting help from him, which makes his attitude here a lot more reasonable. If this was really about selfishness, then he could have turned on these people and gone with their enemy that's offering a job with actual payment. Yet, he declines them. He also expresses a degree of melancholy after he makes his decision not to save the park. He even travels back to the park in order to return something quite valuable he was given. He could have easily walked off with it, but he decided that if he's not going to help them, then he shouldn't keep what they gave him. This all leads up to what I'd call the most significant moment in the show. After listening in to the crowd and learning just how big of a deal the park closing is, Kanye goes back on his word and takes up the management position to save the lives of these people. He didn't have to do this, he wasn't forced, he wasn't threatened, he made a conscious altruistic decision to take up a ridiculously difficult role without pay to save a bunch of people whom he doesn't even know. By the way, here's how he spent his first night. And here's him checking the visitor account completely alone another night. His work ethic to save these people gets so crazy that he faints from exhaustion and develops a summer cold that puts him out of commission for a while, and he still wants to help. One problem narcissists have is the inability to handle criticism. They'll take opposition as an offense and lash out at others. Whenever Kanye makes suggestions for what the park's next move should be, he takes his employees' criticisms of his ideas into consideration and comes up with compromises. The only time he doesn't do this and instead gets a lot harsher on his employees is after he learns a significant detail about why it's crucial that the park remains in business. So in the end, he's not getting upset for the sake of himself, but for the sake of others. He's also shown to be quite aware of his employees' feelings, and does his best to understand where they're coming from. His empathy also extends to his personal life in scenarios where people accidentally screw him over. This isn't limited to dramatic situations like these, but in casual chit chat too. <laughs> when his secretary took the reins and solved a problem he caused, he didn't grow envious or insecure, he was happy for her. This becomes all too apparent as he can't help but smile when she achieves success. 
Narcissists desperately want people to admire them. Yet, Kanye's ensuring that his secretary knows that people admire her. One last problem narcissists are guilty of is blaming others for their failures and not owning up to their mistakes. An issue Kanye doesn't have. Kanye is not a narcissist. You may be wondering why I cared so much about making that clear, and honestly, I don't know the exact answer myself. Maybe it's because I have a pet peeve for words being used wrong. Maybe it's because I really enjoy the character and don't like seeing his name tarnished. Or maybe it's because I see a bit of myself in him and felt as though if he was being called a narcissist, then I was too. I'm not entirely sure. But what I am sure of is that everything you've seen about this character, the confidence, the compassion, the conviction to make one's goals a reality, they're all phenomenal traits to have and ones that I hope you'll keep on developing for as long as you live. Not in the name of narcissism, but full-fledged, unyielding confidence.